Welcome to Computing at Home with Digital Schoolhouse. Here, we're delivering out-of-the-box computing activities that are accessible, educational and fun. To all learners watching, remember you can pause the video at any time to take notes, collect your thoughts or take part in the activity alongside me. Parents and guardians might want to watch the next bit as it explains how to access our resources. But after that, feel free to join in or sit nearby to supervise if you want to. Let's get started. For accidental adventures, you will need a notepad, a pen or pencil, a standard six-sided dice, and a copy of our story via the link below this video. If you'd prefer to access the resources via our website, go to digitalschoolhouse.org.uk, click on resources, Scroll down the page and find Playful Computing Activities, click on Activity Resources, click on Discover More, and then find Accidental Adventures in the list. The file that you want to access for this activity is Playful Computing Accidental Adventures Editable. This will give you a version of the file that you can type directly into. Alternatively, of course, you can print off the file as well. Alternatively, you can click on the magnifying glass, type in Accidental Adventures, click on Search, and the file that you're looking for will be in the first link. Feel free to pause the video now and collect your resources together. Let's have a look at what you're going to be learning in this activity. Firstly, we're going to be looking at random numbers and using them to select items from arrays. We're also going to be looking at a particular data structure, which is called an array. An array is used for storing multiple items or a list of things under a name. So if you imagine you had a list of shoes and you wrote the word shoes at the top of a list and then you listed the things underneath, boots, flip-flops, trainers, etc. That could be classed as an array. We're also going to be using some English skills. We're going to be looking at your vocabulary, grammar and punctuation. We're going to be looking at past tense and present tense. And we're going to use some English terminology, adjective, noun, adverb and verb. Don't worry if any of these words are new to you. We'll be looking at them in more detail as we work through the activity. OK, so the first job to do with this activity is to make your lists of words. So you can take this by filling in the, the worksheet further below, or you can do this by looking at the story and writing them into your um, notepad. So I'm going to start with my adjectives, and they are going to be green, hairy, smart, um, sleepy, um, pretty, and scary. Then I'm going to do my proper nouns. Proper nouns are names. Lisa, Peter, Old Man River, um, Tom, uh, Dominic. And let's have another girl's name. She hasn't got very many girls' name. Um, let's go for Sarah. There we go. Um, we're also going to then do our common nouns. Now, common nouns are objects or um, animals. They're also counted as a common noun. So I'm going to pop those in here. I'm going to do a mixture of animals and, and objects. So I'm going to do banana. I'm going to do mug. I'm going to do chicken. I'm going to do mouse and I'm going to do, um, what else do we have? Let's do Lego, a Lego brick and one more which is going to be a cat. Next we have verbs and of course verbs are doing words so I'm going to pop those in. So I'm going to have swimming, I'm going to have dancing and horse riding. and watching TV and I'll eat 
two more. Um, let's have uh, eating chips. I like that. And finally, let's have um, uh, one more thing. Trampolini. There we go. And we need one more set of words, which is our adverbs. Adverbs are used to um, describe something. So in this case, they are used where we have the they then lived something ever after. So happily would be a good adverb. So I'm going to use that for my first one. So these are L-Y words. So happily, sadly, scarily, sleepily. Um, I need two more. Um, what shall we have? Let's have oddly and awkwardly. Right, so we have my words. Right, so now we can start to use them with our story. So to do this, we're going to be rolling the dice to select the words for the story. So I'm going to read the story to you and I'm going to roll the dice as we go along to um, find out what the words are going to be replaced with. Hello, now it's time for me to tell you a story. Once upon a time, a long time ago, there was a scary princess called Lisa. And she had a pet mouse called Peter. They both had lots of fun. They enjoyed swimming, dancing, doing puzzles and trampolining, as well as flying. One day they got lost. They found a banana. They used the banana to find their way home again. They then lived sadly ever after. The end. Now it's your turn. Make your arrays of words. Read the story, roll the dice and add the words in as you go along. I hope you end up with a story that's as funny as mine. OK, let's look at what we've learnt. We've learnt about random numbers and how they can be used to select items from an array. We've also looked at data structures. We've looked at an array, which is a fixed length of list. So in our example, all of our arrays were a list that was fixed to six items. We've also looked at some English skills. We've looked at your vocabulary, grammar and punctuation because you had to think about whether or not your story made sense. We've thought about past tense and present tense. Again, your words had to be appropriate for the tense that was being used in the story. And we've used some English terminology and hopefully helped you brush up on your understanding of adjectives, nouns, adverbs and verbs. If you've enjoyed this activity, here's some ideas of ways that you can extend it further. Why not write your own randomised story with new arrays of words? Or if you want to have a look at our website, there's a spooky story that you could use there. Or you could create a version of your story using a programming language such as Scratch. In Scratch, instead of using arrays, you use lists and lists can be of any length. You don't create the fixed length at the beginning like you do with an array. Thank you for taking part. I hope you've had fun and learnt something new. If you have any questions or feedback for me, please email dsh at uki.org.uk. Now, we'd love to see you learning computing at home with Digital Schoolhouse. Parents and guardians, feel free to share any images or videos on Twitter or on Facebook using the hashtag computing at home. You can find our contact information in the section below or at the end of this video. Lastly, I wanted to say a huge well done for taking part today. I'm Estelle and I look forward to seeing you next time.